So I want to show you something cool today. Uh, I was working on my little uh, simulated chat here. And um, last week I did some animation with it. This week I was working on getting it to automatically scroll when new text came in. And I found an event that I didn't know about that was really helpful. So I wanted to show you that in this video. Uh, let's come over here and just basically code this from scratch and I'll kind of share with you where I got caught up. So if I wanted to auto scroll this, uh, my strategy is going to be to use a resize observer. And I actually have a use on resize hook right here. This I can share the code for, but it basically sets up an observer for a resize observer. And so the strategy is going to be, you know, just basically keep an eye on this content, this kind of inner content here. And uh, whenever it changes size, that's when we know whether to scroll or not. So uh, this guy is height 80 and this inner P tag you can see right here is updating. So uh, that's when we know we need to scroll when that changes and a resize observer is perfect for that. So the way this hook works um, is we pass in a ref and we get a callback whenever that happens. So let's go ahead and pass in a ref. We want this ref to be on our changing element, this p tag. So we'll make something called um, a content ref, since this is going to be the content. We'll slap this on the p tag. Actually, I think we can just put it on this outside div. And now, if I pass in the content ref, we should get a callback every time this resizes. So let's go ahead and default this to null. So TypeScript knows we're doing the right thing here. Let's pop open the console. And now you can see I get resize every time this changes. So pretty cool, pretty easy. And um, now that we know uh, when the inner content is changing, we can actually scroll this scrollable div right here. So if we find this, the one with overflow scroll on it, the way we can actually change this is with the scroll top property. So right now it's 92. When I'm scrolled up here, it's zero. And when it's at the bottom, it's 120. And the way we can calculate that is using the scroll height which is 440. And if I find this element, we're going to see um, this, the inner child is 440. So that's where it's coming from. It's basically the height of the children. Um, but the scroll height is not 440. It's 120. Where does that come from? Well, we need to subtract off the height of the actual scrollable container, which is the client height. So we can see how far down to scroll it. If we say scroll height minus client height, and now uh, that's 120. So if we set scroll top to zero, that's the top. If we set it to 120, that's the bottom. So let's just basically do exactly this. This is going to be the max scroll height. And instead of uh, this, we want our scrollable container right here. So we need another ref for this. So let's make a scrollable ref. And we'll call that scrollable ref. Now we can get the scrollable element with the scrollable ref dot current. And if we don't have that, let's just go ahead and return. And we'll replace this right here. Whoops. And let's go ahead and type this. This is going to be an HTML div element. And so is this. So now we have the max scroll height and all we need to do is set the scroll top to the max scroll height every time our children resize. So let's save this, refresh, give it a shot. And uh, this is pretty cool. Works pretty well. Um, you can see resize observer is a really good solution for this. And uh, the only problem is if we try to scroll up, this is happening over and over again. It's kind of killing our ability to take control from the user's perspective. So um, what might we do here? What we want to do is see if the user has scrolled up, right? 
uh, and maybe flip a flag so that we don't run our auto scroll logic right here if that flag is true. Um, you know, if auto scrolling is false or something like that. Um, the only problem is if I were to set up an event handler on our scrollable ref right here that says on scroll, let's just take a look and see this. We are going to see it fire uh, every time we set the scroll top. So uh, if I scroll right here, we do see scrolled firing. So that's nice. We could use that to set some state. But the problem is, how do we differentiate when we're scrolling our div programmatically versus when the user is scrolling it? And so you can see right here, we can't do that using the scroll event. Um, this is where the wheel event comes in. And I didn't know about this. If we search for MDN wheel event, then um, there's actually a wheel event that fires when the user rotates a wheel button on a pointing device. It's also fired for related devices that simulate wheel actions such as trackpads and mouse balls. Um, and this thing has pretty good support, actually. I was surprised to see this is very well supported. I just never heard about this before. Um, but I learned about it this week. And uh, check this out. If we change on scroll to on wheel, and say user scrolled. Now, if I refresh and we hit play, we're not gonna see that firing for our programmatic scroll top. But as soon as I try to scroll, I get user scrolled. Pretty sweet, right? So let's just make some state. We'll call it user scrolled. Start it off as false. And then um, on wheel, let's just set user scroll to true for now. And now only if the user did not scroll should we actually update the scroll top. Let's try this out. Press start. We see auto scrolling. But as soon as I scroll, now I have control of this. So this is pretty awesome. This little wheel uh, event um, is actually perfect for distinguishing whether the user is scrolling or whether we're programmatically scrolling. Now the docs do say that you shouldn't use this event to determine the actual scroll um, position, like the amount of pixels scrolled. So you still wanna use that because you could get a wheel event on something that doesn't scroll. But for this purpose, it's, it's perfect. So this is pretty awesome. Um, let's improve this because right now we're kind of in auto scroll mode as soon as I scroll then we lose control, but it'd be nice if we got back down to the bottom if we started auto-scrolling again. So how might we do that? Well, uh, let's come here to the wheel event, and I'm gonna console.log e.delta y. So check this out, this is pretty cool. If I scroll up, we see kind of the amount of, of um, pixels that are scrolled. If we scroll down, it's positive, and if we scroll up, it's negative. So, um, Let's first fix the, the scrolling down, because right now it auto scrolls, but even if I just scroll down, we stop the auto scrolling. So we really only want to set user scroll to true if e dot delta y is less than zero, right? So now if I refresh, start this, we get auto scrolling. And if I scroll down, we still get auto scrolling. But now if we scroll up, we stop it. So that's one branch. The next branch is once we've started scrolling down again, we only want to pick back up auto scrolling if we've reached the bottom. And we know how to calculate that because we're calculating it right here. So let's just grab all of this logic. And now we want to say basically else if we're at the bottom. So if the scrollable element scroll top is equal to the max scroll height, then let's go ahead and set user scrolled to false. And let's go ahead and rename this. I'm just gonna call this should auto scroll. Set should auto scroll. And I think we're gonna invert this. So if we should auto scroll, it's gonna be true. And we'll just say should auto scrolls false right here and true. I just wanna make this a little bit easier to name. So. If we scroll up, we shouldn't auto scroll, so we're gonna set it to false. Otherwise, if we scroll to the bottom, if the user has scrolled to the bottom, let's set it back to true, and our resize observer should just fire just fine. And uh, let's see how this works. Oh, looks like 
we're not auto scrolling because we default this to false. So let's default this to true. Okay, we're auto scrolling. And now if I scroll up, we have control. And if I scroll to the bottom, we're auto scrolling again. This is pretty neat. Um, I don't even think about this, but let's see if we can add a little button here to show. This would be scrollable div. If we made this relative, we should be able to do something like absolute bottom zero, inset x zero, make a little button with like a hand pointing down. Oh, I think we might need that stuck right there. Let's just add another div. Just want to do something real kind of quick and dirty. Let's get rid of this relative. Ah, looks like this P is taking up some space. Let's just go ahead and wrap this with a relative. I think this is kind of how we need to do it. A wrapping div around our scroller and our content. Move that right there. Now that's inside, let's flex, justify, center this. Maybe bottom two. And now we can make this background white. Rounded shadow. Maybe size eight. Background gray, 200. Or what about background white with some opacity and a backdrop blur? Something like that. So now we have this little button. And if I click on it, we want to go back down to the bottom. Let's see if we can do that on click. Set should auto scroll to true. So if I hit start, there we go. And now let's conditionally hide this. Only if we're not auto scrolling, should auto scroll, do we render this div. And uh, let's check this out. Little auto scroller can scroll up, read the text, click the button, and we start scrolling again. And I can also scroll back down to the bottom and the button goes away. So um, pretty fun. I really liked finding this. There's been a ton of times over the last few years I've searched for how to differentiate programmatic scrolling from user-based scrolling. And I don't know why I just never came across this. But you can see here, this is, um, this is pretty awesome, pretty easy to work with. And there's a bunch of other use cases I've had for needing to know if the user is scrolling versus if something else is scrolling. You know, like clicking on a table of contents and having the page auto scroll. Um, I have another version of this that has some animation, but this is just pretty basic. I wanted to show you how to make this. And um, I actually found out about it from this library called Use Stick to Bottom. It's from Stackblitz. And someone shared it with me on Twitter. And uh, I was poking around the source and I saw this wheel event and I was like, man, this is so cool. So um, this is a cool library. Um, I have it installed in here, actually. So if I were to get rid of everything we just did like this and these two refs, scrollable refs and content refs, I can actually just get them from use stick to bottom. If we grab this, we'll see it has a content ref and a scroll ref. And I'll just pass this scroll ref here, content ref there. Let's hide our little button right here. And I start this. They're going to have an animated slide that works really well. And there's a bunch of cool options. So I wanted to make sure to show you this library. It's really awesome. It seems to work pretty well um, in the cases I've tried it out. So it's always nice to find code that already exists. But this, uh, this wheel event that we had, um, definitely want to make sure to share that with you all because it's just really neat, and um, I think I'll use it in a lot of uh, cases in the future. Also, I'll share all this code. This use on resize hook is a nice one that I've that I've come to use a bunch, um, and so I think you'll get some use out of that as well. But yeah, just wanted to share that with you today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments.
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.